Hi, I'm Sam, and this is Sam Says. Today, I'm going to be showing you the new expansion for Viceroy, Viceroy Times of Darkness. Viceroy Times of Darkness is currently on Kickstarter, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about what it adds to Viceroy and whether it's going to be worth your time and money or not. So let's start off. What does this game add? This game adds quite a bit. And so let's start off with what it adds to setup during every single game that you play. And it adds these domain cards. So typically during a game of Viceroy, you're going to be dealt three character cards. You're going to choose one to place in your pyramid, one to discard, and one to keep in your hand. What this card replaces is it replaces the one that you would play. What I found in a lot of my games of Viceroy is if somebody got, for say, an infinite gemstone as one of the base level cards, that was really powerful. Um, and it ended up skewing the game a little bit and gave them a pretty big advantage at the beginning. What this does is it gives you four different rewards that you can choose from. You can either gain four gemstones of whatever color you would like, a science token, a sword or attack token, or you can draw an additional card. Plus, it gives you the rainbow. So this will work with whatever color you want. But that, just by itself, is a really good addition to the game. I have enjoyed playing with that. I think it makes the game better. It makes things more balanced right from the beginning. And it kind of allows you to choose more of the strategy that you want to take right from the get-go. So I'm a big fan of that. In addition, for two-player and solo games, they have added these cards. So instead of having one for each color, in a two-player game, when I played my normal voice Viceroy copy, what I found was it was very easy to say, well, I want that card. Oh, okay, I'll go for something else then. And then everybody got a card every time. There was not a lot of challenge to it. I mean, sometimes we both want the same card, but most of the time it worked out in a way that, you know, it, it, it wasn't very difficult to be able to get the cards that you wanted. What this does is it increases... Um, it increases the chance that you guys are going to lose gems, which I don't always like losing gems, but it makes the game more interesting, um, and it adds some variability to the play. It makes it a better game overall, a better experience playing with two players. So that is another thing that I'm a big fan of. Um, they also revised a couple of law cards. So with your original base game, uh, there are four law cards that they are going to be swapping out from the base game with the expansion. I believe they've clarified some of the wording on the cards, uh, just made them more clear. So let's talk about the other things that this expansion adds. Specifically, there are three modules that this expansion will add to the game. Now with these modules, you can play with any combination of them. You can play with one, two, or even all three added to your game. It simply depends on what type of game experience that you would like to have. So let's talk about them. The first one, and honestly, I see this module as an auto-include. I will always play with these cards in my deck. Is the Aristocrats expansion. So the Aristocrats expansion adds three law cards to the law deck and 12 Aristocrat cards to your character deck. What the Aristocrats do is they all are going to be kind of like a normal character. But on the base level, instead of costing one resource, they cost two resources. So they're a little bit more expensive. And you'll notice that instead of having a color in the bottom, like a normal card would, you've got blue there, this does not have a color. Instead, it has text. And the text gives you additional ways to score points. So if I were to play this on the base level of my pyramid, that is just not going to do anything for me. And um, I got no benefit for playing it on the first level, but that is active. Now, if I were to play it on the second level, on top of these, Notice it doesn't have a color. That actually is ineligible to paint. So you can't paint over that. But what it's doing is generally more beneficial than painting. You're going to score a lot of victory points off of them. Some of these are, this person gives you six extra victory points for each set of a defense token, a magic token, a science token in your pyramid. So all of a sudden, instead of getting 12 points at the end of the game for each of those, you're getting 18. That's huge. This one gives you an additional magic token. For those of you that like to play the magic tokens, Mm. This gives you two sword tokens, can really mess over your opponents. And you can combo some of these, like this one. Each of your swords makes your opponent lose an additional two. So instead of making your opponents lose four for every sword you have, you can make them lose six. Now imagine you had those two paired together. Awesome combination. This gives you a shield and a science token. Seven straight up victory points. 
two victory points for every adjacent character card. So kind of like that one law card, but you get additional benefits for being a character card. And then last but not least, this one, you get three for each of these characters, the aristocrat characters in your pyramid. So if you've gotten quite a few of those, there's a lot of options and a lot of cool things that those aristocrats can add to your game. Now those are very simple. They don't really add any complexity. It's simply you read the card and okay, that's additional ways to score victory points. So that module I will always play with. No matter what other modules I'm going to play with, no matter base game, the aristocrats module is something that's just always going to be included in my game. I'm a big fan of that. The next module I want to talk about is the underworld module. So the underworld module also adds some law cards to the deck. It adds these tokens, and then it also adds bribery tokens. It also adds criminal cards. Criminal cards are unique. Criminal cards are actually played below the first level of your pyramid. So you actually have a level negative one of your pyramid, well, a level zero of your pyramid, essentially. Um, and so these cards do not have anything on the bottom because nothing can be played below them, but they do have the two colors on the top corners, which means they actually have to be played below two already existing base cards, like so. Those actually can be used to paint. Obviously, they're going to be worth less victory points. They're only going to be worth one because you, you do the victory points off of the top card. But you are always going to have one of these cards in your hand. So you'll always have one. You're dealt one at the beginning of the game. And if you play one of these during your round, during the development phase, you will draw one at the end of your turn. In addition, if you don't like the card that you have in your hand, you can put them on the bottom of the deck and draw a new card at the end of the round. So you are always going to have one of these criminal cards in your hand. Now, one thing that I like about that is I find in a lot of my Viceroy games, I am card starved, that I really, really need cards. And especially if I have to give up a turn of gaining a card in the auction so I can get more gems to be able to fuel my purchases, I'm just down an additional card there. And so I run into a lot of issues when I'm down cards. This always gives me the option to be able to card, get cards. Um, because I'm always going to have one, so I'll always be able to play something if I want to. However, there is a lot of risk to be able to get that reward. So on these cards, there are three levels. There's a top, a middle, and a bottom, and they all have different rewards on them. When you play one of these criminal cards, you're going to choose one of the three rewards that you want. Now, generally, they get better as they go down. So in this one, the top one is a magic token. So if I play this, no matter what, I get a magic token and I place it on that card. But what's going to happen is these tokens right here, I'm going to shuffle them up without looking at them and I'm going to draw next to the magic token that has two of them. So I'm going to draw two and then out of those two, I only get to discard one. So in this instance, I randomly pick these. This is blank, does nothing. This one at the end of the game would force me to discard either a magic token or a shield. Obviously, there's an easy choice. I would choose the zero. That would go on my card. The other one would be shuffled back in. So now with two, there's oftentimes a good chance you're not going to take anything awful. But if I wanted to take the second level down, it forces me to take three tokens, and I still only put one back. Now that gives me five diamonds. I have not talked about diamonds yet. Diamonds are a new component that adds to this game. Diamonds are not gems. However, they can be used as gems. For bidding, that becomes very big because I could bid out a diamond and I get to choose what that is even after I see what everyone else bids. So if everyone, you know, has green, yellow, and red, and I'm like, oh geez, I don't want to lose my diamond. Okay, this was blue. And then no problems, I have a blue. And I can even negotiate until I actually choose what color it's going to be. So diamonds tend to be very powerful. So this gives me five diamonds. In addition, I could choose to play a card using these diamonds, um, and they're just whatever resource that I want. So as I go through, the, the benefits generally get even better, uh, but you take on a lot more risk. You could be discarding tokens at the end of the game. These could be straight negative victory points. This is a really bad one. This is negative five victory points. Right, at, right off the bat, right? Negative five. Uh, not great, um, but it's a risk versus reward. Um, so I played with the Underworld expansion and I, I wanted to really focus on it heavily to see how it played. Um, and I played a bunch of those cards. I probably ended up losing about 12 to 15 victory points, 
But the net gain was actually more around 40 with how I built my pyramid. So if you do it in a way that's beneficial, it's, it's, it can be really good. And I love the addition to this because I always have something to play. Um, and, and that's huge for me. Uh, the last thing that this adds uh, is actually bribery tokens. Bribery tokens are really cool in that I can spend any amount of bribery tokens to be able to repeat the benefit of a level of a character card in my pyramid. So let's say I have this guy at level three. So he's sitting in my pyramid at level three. The level three reward is a magic plus three token. I could spend three bribery tokens because I spend the amount of tokens equal to the level of the card that I want to copy. I spend those three bribery tokens and I get that plus three again. So I get to take an additional plus three token and place it on there. That can be insanely powerful. These bribery tokens are really cool. When I played with them, I probably didn't play with them to the full effect because I continually use them one token to be able to keep drawing cards, which don't get me wrong, scored me a lot of points, but I could have, you know, duplicated a really high level. I just never did. That is the Underworld expansion. Once again, I'm a big fan of, of, that, um, of that module because it always gives me those cards that I can play and I just have to take the risk of, do I really want it? I can press my luck into that. The last module is the one that I was least excited about and I played last um, because I wasn't, I didn't, the rules were not written in a way for me to really get a feel for how it was going to play. They explained how to play very well, I just wasn't sure how it would go in the game. But I did play it and I was pleasantly surprised. So the changes that the invasion module brings is at the beginning of the game, everybody gets a combat card. Okay? And the combat cards are just a card with art. Really, that's about it. Those combat cards are used to be able to gain resources, and that will store resources to be able to fight monsters. What these do is that when you are going into the auction phase, and let's say me and another player both bid for red, and we can't decide, and so we both lose them. Well, instead of this going back to the reserve, when I lose a gem during the auction phase, I can actually place it on my combat card. That can then be stored for later on when I have to fight a monster, because monsters are fought using gems. Uh, the invasion module also adds additional law cards to the law deck, so you can play with those law cards. So all of the modules are going to add law cards, um, and the Aristocrats expansion adds characters. So how this works is you actually structure these monster cards into your large deck of character cards that it's kind of your timer for the game which is what feeds the auction row to be able to get cards you're going to deal four cards and then a monster card four cards and then a monster card the monster cards are specific in how they get placed because they have levels levels one two and three so when i place my first four months my first four character cards out there the next monster card will come out okay so we know that this is going to cost a red a green and a blue gem the benefits if you defeated that monster would be you gain a shield and you get to draw a card. But we're not going to actually fight this monster for another three turns. Um, what's going to happen is then the next turn comes around and we're going to reveal the next guy. So this guy costs a yellow gem and you would gain ten victory. Oh, that's the level three. That comes up last. Uh, you would gain, this code costs two blue gems. You'd get a sword token and a science. Next round this would come out. That is also a level three. I, saw, I thought I had some level twos up here. Oh well. Um, level 2s all have two gems. Level 2 there. Seven victory points and a card. And then this guy, one yellow gem, ten victory points, and two draw cards. So how it works is at the end of the round in which we reveal the fourth, we have to go to battle. Okay. Now everybody has to defeat at least one monster. If you do not defeat at least one monster, you get to take one of those cards and it's worth negative four victory points at the end of the game. That's no bueno. You don't want that. But you choose at what level you want to defeat the monster. You can only defeat one per turn. So I can choose to defeat the level one, one of the level twos, or the level three. But if I defeat the level three monster, I have to pay the costs for that monster and everything below it. And I only get the reward for the monster that I defeat. So you really want to make sure that you are saving up the right resources for the monster that you want to defeat. There were some times in the games that I played that I really wanted to defeat the third monster because they gave me a great, awesome reward. 
there were other times that I looked at it and I said, you know what, I'm going to take the level one. Problem is, is the level one generally gives you the lowest benefit and you still pay three resources for it. But it adds a lot of fun decisions to the game because you're always looking at it and when that first monster comes out, everyone's like, okay, I need to make sure I'm storing those resources. And I have those resources available because no one wants to take those negative four, right? Everybody wants to defeat a monster because not only do you defeat it and reduce the you know amount of negative points that you would take, you also get a benefit. It's an expensive benefit, but you get a benefit from it. Big fan of the expansion, uh, or the invasion module. I probably won't play it with every game. Definitely not one that I'm going to bring in with beginners. Uh, but if I have a group that knows Visor really well, I will add that in. The Underworld expansion as well, or module, I, I probably am not going to bring in with beginners. Um, just because it adds a little bit more to think about, and that press your luck adds a little bit more. Um, but once I have people that are that know how to play the game, absolutely, I'm going to add them. I'm probably going to play with one of these two um, every single time I play the game. And I have not played with all three of them combined yet, but I do plan on doing that. I think that's going to be a lot of fun. Overall, I am very pleased with, what's, with, with what this adds to the base game of Viceroy. I love the modules. I love that you can add in whatever you want to play, that if you're playing with some newer players, you can be like, all right, we're just going to put in the Aristocrats because it doesn't add a ton of complexity, but for veteran players, it adds more options and kind of gives you some more stuff you want to do. Um, and then later on, you can add in the other modules as you see fit. Uh, the diamond tokens are really cool. They add in a lot of variability. These domain cards, I love these domain cards. Um, I, I think it makes the game more fair and more balanced, so I'm a big fan of those. So overall, if you are on the fence about it or even just wondering if you should, in my opinion, I think you should go for it. If you have Viceroy and if you like Viceroy, this is only going to increase your enjoyment of the game. Uh, I cannot recommend it highly enough. Uh, so thank you for watching. I'm Sam. This is Sam Says. Uh, if you like the video, please subscribe to the channel. Check me out here on my YouTube page, Sam Says Game Reviews, as well as on Instagram, Sam Says Game Reviews. So thank you for watching, and I hope you have a great day. Game on.